Thank you for watching this screencast on Virtual Machine Manager 2012 Release Candidate Edition. My name is Damien Flynn, an Infrastructure Architect for Linebridge Technologies Core IT Department and an MVP for Microsoft's Virtual Machine Technology. Linebridge is a leading provider of translation, development and testing services and a pioneer in technologies participating in Microsoft TAP and Future Council programs. In this session, we're going to introduce System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012, walk through the installation of our host, and manage a virtual Hyper-V server. Before we get started, we need to have the prerequisites of a SQL Server, Windows Automated Install Kit, .NET Framework, and IIS 7 prepared and installed on our test machine. We also have the option to install our SQL Server either locally on the test node or on another member of the domain. Once we've unpacked the build, we can launch the setup utility, which will present us with the initial launch splash screen. From there, we can click on the install button, which will present us with the installation wizard itself. The installation wizard offers us three features, the management server, the console, and the self-service portal. All three we will install in this demonstration. Then we can provide both the product registration detail, agree to the licensing, and sign into the feedback program for customer improvements. After defining or accepting the default installation path, the wizard will check both hardware and software prerequisites and assuming all of those prerequisites have already been installed, we can progress to the next stage. This stage is a database configuration. We define the name of that SQL server we have elected for hosting the virtual manager database, either selecting an existing or a new database. Existing databases may be SCVM 2008 or 2 or previous RC 2012 installation. The next page in the installation wizard is for configuring both the service account and a new feature known as distributed key management. The distributed key management is used in high available installs and uses an organizational unit within our Active Directory to store a special unique key. For the self-service portal configuration, we need to provide the name of our VMM server, which could be localhost or actually the computer name, and the TCP port which the VMM management server is listening on. By default, these are provided for us. We can then progress onto the library configuration where we can use the suggested library name or provide a new path if that suits us better. Finally, we'll be asked to validate all of our choices and the installation wizard will then begin installing each of the different components until both the management server, console and self-service portal modules have all been installed on our server and ready for use. As you can clearly see, the whole installation process is actually quite painless. Okay, that pretty much gets us to the end of actually installing our SCVM server. Next, we're going to actually launch the console and take a step of adding our first Hyper-V server into the console so we can witness how easy it will be to control our virtual machines. Right, the wizard itself automatically starts the console running for us. The first time in, we need to provide the name of the server. In this case, I provided just simply localhost. And within a few moments, the actual virtual machine manager 2012 console will present itself on the screen for us to use. The console looks quite like Outlook in uh, its uh, wonder bar and ribbon bars and each of those areas are configured into virtual machines, fabric, library, jobs and settings. We can see on the screen uh, the fabric has already detected our own SCVM 2012 server and it's in responding state and the library allows us to organize uh, components from the actual virtual machines right through to the library resources, and even our network interfaces. Also, as part of our installation, we installed the self-service web portal, which is again on localhost or the machine name. But since we haven't actually configured any of the user roles or access, we can attempt to do a logon just using the administrator account on our system, as it has uh, by default uh, got access. And um, we will find that it also uh, has no access currently to the portal. We'll come back a little bit later on and set up a self-service user role which will address that and allow us to actually see the virtual machines that are in our hosts and on our clouds. Back in the console we're going to switch to the fabric view 
and we're going to actually add our Hyper-V host to the environment using the wizard. The first option here is to add a node that's part of our domain already, and I'm going to use just our standard domain administrator and username and password. Of course, this is not best practice in a production environment, but for the purposes of this lab, it will help us see how the process executes. Next, we actually provide the name of the server. In my case, it's called DigiShare01. So I'm just going to type that into the console and uh, we can then click on the next button to allow the system to go scan the network and find our server. Once the server has been found, we can select it and it will tell us that if the Hyper-V system is not already installed, it will go ahead and add it for us. We're going to just take the default host group for now and tell the system that we want to associate the virtual machine to this server. Now one of the things that SCVM 2012 RC does not like is pre-existing uh, agents. So as you can see on the screen I'm on my second attempt here because my first attempt to do this failed because I already had the beta agent installed. I've since uninstalled it and I'm pushing the agent a second time and now we can see the wizard is actually adding the nodes into the environment. Enabling Hyper-V wasn't something that had to be done, so it processed pretty quickly because Hyper-V was already installed, running, and has some virtual machines live on my test environment. The new Outlook-esque interface that is part of the console for SCVM 2012 will take some getting used to. However, rest assured, all of the information you previously accessed in 2008 or 2 is still here for us, just easier to assess. The Fabric View now also contains information not only on our hosts and our host groups, but also for library servers, Pixie Boot servers, Windows Update servers, networking, and even SMIS enabled storage devices. Back in the VM and Services view, we get to see all of the virtual machines that have been detected on our clusters or Hyper-V hosts around the environment. Our job view, as you expect, has all of the different jobs. And one of the most important new views to us on the Services view is the concept of clouds. We will look into that in much more detail later. Go grab your copy of 2012 or C now and try out this fantastic new virtual machine management environment. My name is Damien Flynn and thank you for watching this quick start on VMM 2012 release candidate.